Now, okay, can you do this experiment again, please? Put the water out. Take the water out. Okay, look at the arrow. I'm sorry about that. We were trying to combine videos from somebody on the fourth floor, somebody in the basement, somebody I am sitting in a completely different room. Okay, so now hopefully you can see that there is a arrow which is pointing to the left in my screen. And all we're gonna do is put a glass of water. You can do this at home. Draw an arrow on a piece of paper, keep it behind a glass of water, and then just pour some water into the glass. Pour the water into the glass. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. And the arrow has changed direction. And the arrow has changed direction. Okay, so why does this happen? Why does this happen uh, is what we are trying to ask in this thing. This is a little demonstration. So if you want to leave your answers in the chat uh, or in the comments, you can uh, leave this uh, and we will see how uh, this happens. Okay, so uh, meanwhile, has the uh, camera crew reached up there already? Are we ready to start with some other experiments? Do you want to see this experiment again one more time? Uh, Maybe you can just repeat it one more time so people can see the experiment and they can probably try it at home also. Yeah, the arrow is now pointing to the left. And once he adds some water, see what happens. Try and explain based on what we know about light. Clearly the arrow did not, did not, it's not an illusion. This is not a thing. Uh, this is not an illusion, this is real. This is real because of the way the light beams, the light rays from the arrow are coming to your eye. Somewhere the path has got changed because they came through the water. Okay, so try and think about this. We will try and uh, uh, do some more experiments. Okay, so this is one fun experiment with light. Uh, Aparna and team, do you have some more experiments to show? Okay, I guess our team is ready over there. Very good, very good. Let's look at one more interesting experiment that we can do. Okay, let's look at one more interesting experiment. Uh, Aparna, actually, now that they are there, why don't you unmute yourself and uh, uh, let, let Suren do the talking from there itself. And I will not have to do this remote thing of trying to figure out what's happening in a lab on the fourth floor. Can you hear me, Arno? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dhanyawad. So uh, we are going to, in the last session, we are certainly going to visit a fantastic chemistry lab where we are going to look at some ultra fast reactions and just to give you an introduction how fast the reactions can be I have some experiment over here and I hope I will keep you entertained in that I have two solutions one and solution two a small beaker with uh, yeah and the uh, and the third one I have some Guy over here, this is indigo carmine, and I'm going to mix this in solution A, and you will see the color turning. Now, this is the blue. I have solution B. I'm going to transfer this into the solution A and see what happens. Surendra, are you sure you got the right solutions? I think there is a problem. Can I get a conical task then? Yeah, fine. Should not be a problem. And a bottle of water. I'll make it up. Heater. Heated water. Uh, 
and there is a vial which has white powder in there in the tray red tray Okay, where is everybody disappeared? Hey, is it still blue that solution? Oh. Surendra, did you have warm water in that? Yes, I am. I am pouring warm water. Actually, we have to prepare the warm water now, so we have done it. Okay, great. And now let's mix it and see what happens. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, wait, wait, wait. You poured something in it. What color is this? This is green. So one was an acidic solution. The other oh, was... Oh, wait, wait, wait. The color changed. The color changed. It's become red. And it did not take time at all. What happened? This it was... And let's see what happens. Wait, wait. You're pouring something. What's the color? It's, it's becoming yellow. Yeah. It's yellow. Okay. Why did you pour it again? Fast thing. Now I pour it again. One meter coffee like we have in South India. And let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, see the colors. There are two different colors. One yellow, the other greenish. Oh, okay. The, What's happening, Arnab? Uh, he poured something which was yellow and it became red. And let's keep looking at this red. The red is turning orange. The red is turning orange and it's becoming yellow. Yellow. Oh boy, that's right. Wow, isn't that cool? Did you like this demo? What did we do? We took something. Let's pour this again. One meter coffee. Oh boy, what's happening over here? I think there is some reaction. And now it's becoming green. I don't know what. And, look and oh green to red. Green to red. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the red. Look at the red. It's turning orange. It's turning orange. And slowly it's going back to yellow. Okay, somebody is already guessing what chemicals are being used. Let me see what people on... Uh, YouTube are saying. Uh, let's look at that. Uh, uh, okay, so let's uh, maybe given that we don't have much time, we should probably just go ahead and uh, uh, explain what is happening. So uh, what was happening is that in that solution which was there, uh, there was a dye. Okay. There was a dye and along with it, there was, what is the dye serine that you use? Did you use indigo carmine? carmine? He used indigo carmine and along with the indigo carmine, he also used something which is in chemistry, what is called a reducing agent. Okay. Now, obviously the dye has different states. The dye has different colors depending on whether there's lots of oxygen or it is reduced, which means there's not a lot of oxygen. So now when he pours it from a height, like he's pouring coffee, imagine if you're pouring coffee, if you pour it like you're pouring coffee from a big height, there's a lot of oxygen that can mix with it. So the dye goes to the oxidized state. Now, the moment the dye is in the, in the beaker and it's sitting there, the other chemical, which is a reducing agent, I think he probably used glucose, uh, is slowly trying to move it to the other state. So this with this on one side it is green on the other side it is red or yellow and you see these different changes in color if you want to know more about this reaction this is called the traffic light reaction i will put the details in the chat i will put it both on youtube facebook and uh, uh, zoom uh, meanwhile uh, we have about 10 minutes to go uh, do you want to show some other cool stuff with liquid nitrogen or something like that yes i know we are and uh, let us change over to energy 2020 on camera and we are going to do something okay so do you want me to change the camera to nst 2021 event anywhere in the country 
Okay, okay. Right. just a second. Just a second. I need to switch cameras. Are you ready? No, uh, I think. Continue. Do we continue with Aparna's camera? Yeah, we continue with Aparna's camera. Okay, we will continue with Aparna's camera. So inject this balloon, right? Uh, just a sec. Just a sec. I need to be able to uh, highlight this. Uh, Okay, so Aparna's camera is now spotlighted for everyone. And uh, we can't hear you very well because you're probably not connected to that camera, uh, your mic. So you'll have to speak a bit loudly, Surin. So fine. Am I audible now? Uh, much better. Yeah. So fine. We all have played with this fantastic thing, even as a toddler. And now this is a fantastic balloon. Then I'm going to do a, some funny thing with it. I'm going to immerse this in a magic liquid over here. And let's see what happens to this balloon. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's literally decree reducing in size. Finally. Oh, and what is this battling sound? Oh boy. Oh, yes. It's completely contracted. So what is this magic liquid? Oh boy. I think we as a Children, especially the Marathi audience, must have heard this thing. Chalre, Bhopriya, Tunuk, Tunuk, and see what happens. The ashes from the pumpkin. Oh boy. This balloon is regaining its size. What happened? What are we playing with over here? We are playing with something called liquid nitrogen. So we're not do this again like I'm doing with, I'm doing it with the bare hands. I'm used to it. So this is liquid nitrogen that TIFR uses in many of their laboratories for pre-cooling the liquid helium experiments. All experiments which we do at low temperatures, their equipment needs to be pre-cooled and we can't afford to use helium. So we use liquid nitrogen, which is minus two, uh, 93 degrees Celsius or 73 Kelvin. 77 Kelvin, 77 Kelvin, so minus 190 something. We acquire this liquid nitrogen from our normal air. But here, I have another surprising thing to see. How much does it expand or how much does it contract? Now, we all have seen a device like this. We used to it in the kitchen to cook our dal chawal, even chicken at some time or mutton. And here I go. See what is happening? What do you think will happen now? Oh, not even a moment, and it started whistling. I'm going to turn the thing up my whistle. So the gas, the liquid is heating up, converting itself into gas, and the pressure is so high that it is venting out of the vent. And let's see what happens over here. And to make sure that it is there, really, it is really some gas. Okay, fine. Now, I'm going to come to a very simple experiment. We all do... So, wait, wait. Uh, so, so Indra, maybe we should just explain this once for everyone. I'll turn my video on as well in case you can, hopefully you can also hear me. Uh, basically, Gases occupy a lot of volume compared to a liquid. So if you take a nitrogen gas, you take 700 liters of nitrogen gas, you make it a liquid, you'll get only about one liter. So if I have one liter of liquid nitrogen, if it boils, you'll get 700 liters of gas. So even when you put a little bit of liquid nitrogen inside the pressure cooker, remember liquid nitrogen is at minus 196 Celsius or uh, or 77 Kelvin, very cold for that. The room outside, it's almost at say 27 degrees centigrade or 300 Kelvin, it's very hot, so it boils. And when it boils, it boils instantly, increasing the pressure in the cooker and the whistle keeps, keeps going off. Or when you had a balloon, you saw the balloon shrink. That's all because gases occupy a much larger volume than if you make a liquid. Okay, now we're gonna do another demonstration with a very interesting material. And this material, is called a superconductor. But before that, we look at what happens to just a bulb and some copper wire. So uh, Surendra, can you 
explain what you are doing, please? Yes. So this is almost 60 to 70 meters of copper wire wound on a bobbin and I have a battery and a bulb. Now the so copper is a very good conductor of electricity. We use these wires in our homes and factories. Now, so before that, can you hold that? Can you hold the bulb carefully to show that it's glowing very dimly? Because uh, I know I know we are doing this. We are doing this with a handheld camera, so it's we are doing it from someone's mobile phone. So uh, yeah, you can barely see the bulb glow. Yeah, there it is. Now we all know that the conductors have still some internal resistance, and that is what is making the current le rather it's less current is flowing through the copper wire and that is why the bulb is dimly lit. Now I'm going to cool this coil and put it for that I'm going to put it in the liquid nitrogen and see what happens to the bulb. Slowly the resistance of the copper wire is reducing and you can see the bulb has started glowing brighter now. Can you see the intensity going up? So the amount of current flowing through the copper wire has increased and it is really, really gone in bright, it got, it's gone up in brightness. So if I remove the coil from the liquid nitrogen, it is regained to or rather come back to the uh, room temperature and the resistance will automatically go up. We'll look at it in the mean, uh, in the meantime, as Arnab has mentioned, we shall look at something which is called a superconductor. Is the superconductor something similar that he will give you two tickets instead of one by traveling by bus? No. This is a special alloy or a mixture of various different elements and, and oxides of them. And we have a small black disc. Can you just focus on that? Can you see a small black disc inside the thing? I think we should requ we'll require a, another mobile camera battery or torch to light up that thing. There is not enough light falling on it. Okay, can you see the thing? A I little black to... circle in the bottom of it. There's yes. liquid nitrogen which is boiling inside a thermocol box and there is something with a little black... Uh... Okay, you pour it out. Now, well, it's still a lot of <coughs> condensation, but yeah, the little dark circle in the bottom, that's the superconducting disk. Okay, I think you should pour liquid nitrogen back into it now. I have a track made out of magnets and they are arranged in some polar polarity and see I am not telling you lie. this is the magnet very very strong and oh boy it takes some strength to move it out. Now you can see what's happening to this. Can you see the gap? Can you see the gap? See this gap. This particular small model of engine is floating on the track. Can you see the light coming through the gap? Yeah, so this is floating. So what's happening? It's levitating on this track. So more about it when you raise any doubts because we are running short of time and the English session will start in next two minutes. And I think I have one last demonstration to show that is about thermochromic paints. You must have seen the bat car, right? It goes through the gorge into his den and sometimes when he's on the road, his cars can change things and it transforms into something else. So the detectives can't detect him. I have something similar over here and let's see what happens. What color is this? Is there anybody who can tell me what the color is of this car? Okay, fine. Now I'm going to cool it and let's see what happens to the color. Please post on the chat box, what is the original color and what the change color is. Oh boy, it's, the liquid nitrogen still has not gone inside, but you can see the change of color. I don't need to go through the gauge to change the colors. I just switch one switch on my dashboard and the entire color has changed. So in the chat box, do let us know what the colors were originally and what the color is now. I think I should say goodbye to you for the moment. 
and start the next session. And Arnab, all back to you. Uh, and you can yes, yes. But before that, let's tell people. Let's tell people. Uh, do, do you have a magnet? Can you show the levitation, or you cannot show the levitation? That's the basic property. How do we prove to people it's a superconductor? Maybe we can see if a magnet can float on it. Well, it's floating on a magnet. You can see that it's floating on a magnet right there. Okay. Um, so I would first like to check that our next speaker is ready. And in case they are there, Mahan, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, Mahan is ready. I just okay, need to great. share my screen. Uh, yeah. Wait, just a minute. Let's end this uh, demonstration. Uh, I know there are lots of questions on the uh, demonstration. Yes, yes, the English session is going to start. Uh, you're right. Okay, uh, you can continue to watch. It's okay. I mean, uh, you can even ask questions in. Uh, thing. One question which I would like to ask everyone is that, uh, sorry, answer is many people have asked, how are you handling liquid nitrogen uh, with bare hands? Uh, two answers to this. One, of course, the uh, people who are doing these demonstrations are experienced. We do these demonstrations, you know, many, many times in the year, year after year. Uh, we know what to touch and what not to touch. The other thing is, uh, you know, by mistake, if a small drop of liquid nitrogen even falls on your hand, remember your hand is hot. It will probably just bounce off and boil off immediately. Like, you know, you put water on a hot tawa, it just scatters off. It doesn't really touch your hand. So uh, you can be, when you're careful, if you can do it, uh, you, but you have to be very careful. We are experienced. Please don't try to play with liquid nitrogen at home or, well, it's difficult to get it at home, but if you're not, not used to it. Okay, uh, with that, I think uh, we will stop these experiments. We can come back and show some experiments if we have time. Uh, but uh, there's a lighting cross effect happening over here. Just show yeah, you can see, you can see if you can see this tawa, you can uh, or plate. They poured some liquid nitrogen, and you can see these drops are just sort of uh, flying around the surface and going to the edge. Uh, yeah, there you see. You can see these drops are going around. They are they are they are sort of bouncing on a layer of nitrogen gas because the moment the liquid hits the pan, uh, it boils, and you will then then uh, see the, it will float on that. Okay, uh, so, uh, 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 okay, so let's move over. Uh, thank you so much, uh, 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 the experimental team, and thank you, Aparna, for using your mobile phone to allow